Hi everybody, this is Dan from Mitric RC and today we're going to show you how to build light buckets. Sometimes cars like these come with headlight buckets but no tail light buckets. So we're going to just go ahead and show you how to make those. Also, uh, we're going to show you how to make a paint mask decal if you ever want to make one of those. Sometimes the tail lights are just shown as stickers, uh, not really like meant to have the light shining through them, but you can still put build a light bucket and shine a light through them, it'll work fine. And in fact, this car is exactly that way. It didn't have light buckets and it didn't mean to have lights shining through it, but we're going to put them in anyway, show you how cool that it looks. Uh, so the first thing that we did is we actually made a paint mask decal. And the way we did that is we took some blue tape, some wide blue tape, we cut a piece off like this. We very, very gently placed it on here. We didn't press hard or anything. And then we took a permanent marker and kind of held it up to the light so we could see the outline. And we drew a shape. We'll draw it here right now. Draw one just like it. Basically, we drew a triangle and to match the shape of, of the colored light. We made sure that the triangle was a little bit smaller than the colored light. That way, you know, if it's misaligned a little bit, the light doesn't come through the side. So make sure that the paint mask decal is always a little bit smaller than the, the, the red sticker. Uh, one other thing to note, we don't recommend you try and build light buckets for the front. It's hard to make them come out good in any case. So uh, look for car bodies that have at least a front uh, light bucket, and then you can always build the, the rear ones real easy. All right, uh, so that's how we made our, our sticker. We took this, then cut it out, and then just applied it. We did one for each side. And, uh, and then let's go ahead and actually start building the light buckets. And we'll take you through a couple steps of that. When making your light buckets, you can paint the back silver. We like this chrome stuff. This is spaz sticks. We found it online. We're actually looking, trying to see if we can pick up this, this line. Hopefully we can. But if not, you know, you can find it on other websites on the internet. And uh, so we made sure that we painted this whole entire area the same effect, get that nice chrome effect. And one of the keys to getting a really nice finish with this, on your first few coats, put it on really, really lightly, just a dusting on there before you put on heavier coats. That's how you get the good look. Uh, right, so with that, we're going to go ahead and cut out, get a nice large piece of this. So we're going to build light buckets for the back of the car. And we want to probably, we're not going to build necessarily all the way out here, but we'll kind of pick a line how far we want to go out to. I'm not sure, we'll probably put uh, two, two red tail lights in each side, two of the small red ones. So, okay, yeah, we're going to try and go about this far out. So we want to make sure we have enough material to go kind of down and then up. Now, what's needed here is you, you kind of got to figure out the line that the back of the lights is going to be that's going to shine through. I, I think we're going to probably pick our line right around here. And so when you're building your box, you want to make sure there's enough material this way for the bottom ledge and then enough material this way to go up to build the top ledge. So we're looking at about something like this is where it's going to cut back from. So we're going to cut out this bottom ledge, just the front of it. And then we're going to cut out the top ledge and kind of add them together like one, like one, two. So you can get, you know, the complete length. All right, so I'm going to estimate in this case to come back to about here should be a safe amount. <clears throat> so we're going to cut this, this much off and we'll cut it straight across. at least as, as straight as I can make it. And the cool thing about making light buckets, they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Uh, we're going to use zap goo. We're going to apply it uh, liberally to build this up. So even if the, the shape of it isn't absolutely perfect, you can kind of build the light, uh, the little bit of the shell out of the zap goo itself. Okay, and you'll see more about that when we get a little bit closer to it. Okay, now let's see how wide do these need to be. Uh, estimate what our width is going to be. We're not going to come all the way out to the side. We'll come out about this far. So we want this baby to be about uh, this far. Okay, I'll just cut it straight up and I'll build another one the same way. Okay, now this is, yeah, this is how it was, just like this. Okay, I'm going to make another one of those. Same width, 
Okay, so I want to make sure these are the same, same size. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I have a little bit of a curve right here. It's okay. I'll just make it so that that's to the to the outside, which I need to cut around anyway. Now what we're going to do to get the shape, to figure out what the shape is going to be for the top ledge, because the top ledge needs to be curved to match the curve of the body. And this one needs to be curved as well. We'll look at it first straight on, and then we'll look at it from straight down and estimate what our, what our, uh, how our cut should be. Okay, so looking at it this way, it's actually really straight. It's absolutely straight from this angle, and that's good. That, that'll actually help us a little bit. There is more curve up here, a little bit more curve, where our line is going to come across. Um, okay, and we really need to, to kind of gauge you know, what the shape is. If we were to draw an imaginary line right here, when we looked at it, like what, where, where would that line shape be? That's what we have to kind of see. And I'm just going to estimate it here. I think it's about like this. All right. So let's kind of set it up here and see how it looks. Okay, and no, that, that was cut a little bit too sharp. Okay, so I'm going to cut it back down a little bit. Make sure you give yourself enough room here. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so if I was to draw that imaginary line, the line that our LEDs are, that, that basically makes the panel, the vertical panel. If I was to imagine where that line is and see how the shape matches the shape of the body, this looks pretty good. So, okay, so I got it in this direction. Now we need to do the up and down. So if it's about this big, I'm gonna need to fold it forward. Kind of estimate where I'm gonna fold it forward. And in that case, it's gonna be a straight line going across here. And I hope you guys can get my meaning on this, how I'm doing it. So just trying to get the, the, the two shapes for the vertical wall and the, and the horizontal wall. That's, that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so we got a, a bend here. So now this, this little piece that I have bent will fit right in here. Okay, but I do need to cut this corner away. This corner right here needs to be cut away some. And I'll just take it easy. I won't cut too much, but I'm going to look at it like, okay, kind of gauge, like looking straight down with this, where would the curve be? And it's about like this. Let's see. Always better to cut less and take more steps than to cut more, to cut too much. Okay, it needs to be cut more at the back here. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna set this in here and try to hold it up so you can see what I've done. See how it sits right in there? That's the goal. We have one nice horizontal wall and one nice vertical wall, All right? And then once this is done, then the next step will be to, to build in the side wall, build in the side wall to, to square it off. Now that we have our pattern for one side, we can kind of flatten it out and cut the other side in the same exact pattern, like this. Okay, so because the right and left are exact mirror images of each other, okay? So I kind of hold it up, and now I'm going to cut it out. Okay, so now they, now I have two of them, right and left. I'm going to bend this one. Let's see, how did I cut it? It needs to be an exact mirror image of each other. So this one I'm going to bend the opposite way, but I'm going to line it up, find the bend, and put the bend in the same spot. Both sides, okay? Hopefully that looks good. Alright. Bend should be about right here. And there we go. That's pretty close. They look pretty similar now, right and left. Okay, pop right in there. Now we're going to build a little, a little filler corner wall right here. Okay, so let's look at this. And kind of estimate like what would the curvature be? What would the curvature be between these two if there was a vertical wall? And if you want, you can actually get a, a marker and draw it. That can be helpful too. Okay, let me just. I'm just going to kind of guess it here. Okay, check it. Whoop, the other way. Okay, well that looks reasonable. It's not too bad. Let's see how it would look in the car. Okay, eh, 
it looks like it could work. It looks like the bits could can work like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start gluing it in. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off <clears throat> the white stickers. We don't want to leave those on. And one other very, very important thing we would need to do before we glue it in place, we need to drill the holes for the LEDs in the in the hor or vertical uh, panel. Because once it's in there, we, we actually want to cut the holes and pop the, the LED bezels in there. Because once it's in there, we won't have access to it anymore once it's glued in place. Okay, so uh, next step then is to peel off the, the stickers and uh, drill some holes. Remember to peel off the clear film before you insert the bezels. Because once the bezels are in there, then you can't really uh, uh, peel the sticker. They'll get stuck in place. Okay, my bezels are in here. The holes are actually a little bit loose, so I'm going to throw a little bit of zap goo on there. So I, I broke my own rule. I made the holes a little bit too big, but I'm not sweating it. A little zap goo will fix them right up. All right, now let's go ahead and do the other side. And uh, in doing the, the other side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match up the, the holes here so they end up in about the same place as close as I can. This is kind of a good way to, to make sure that the holes are symmetric on both sides. I kind of set one side to the other, kind of measure it out, look at it, and go like, oh, okay, it's about like right here. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second, make sure that the holes are in the straight line that I want them to, and that they match the other side. If they are off, you can kind of move the hole by applying pressure while you're drilling. Put, a, put pressure in the direction you want to go. You can kind of move the hole a little bit. You just got to be real gentle. Don't be too rough with it. And you can do it. Okay, again, I'm going to drill this from both sides. Now that we have our basic parts uh, cut out and bent, we've attached the LEDs. We should do a quick test to make sure everything is looking right the way we expect it to. So I plugged it into a controller here. I'm going to apply power. Okay, the lights are on. Kind of set it in here. And just make sure. Like, is that is that how we want it to look? And to me, that looks pretty good. I like exactly. This is exactly what I'm after. The lines look good. Uh, if not, you could cut them, adjust them, change them however you need to. Uh, this looks good. Now, in some cases, there may be cars if you've painted it a light color and the light is bleeding through around the edges. One thing you can do uh, is buy a little, or buy this uh, silver tape. You can buy this at Home Depot or any hardware store and cut out little pieces of it and kind of match the line just to block the light as best you can. When you use the shoe goo, you want to attach the lens that we're building to the plastic directly. You want to make sure the glue seam goes crosses over. So again, you only need to do this if you have a light colored car and the red lights shining around the edges. You can use a little bit of tape but put a, just as little as you can around here such that the, uh, the panels that we made can be glued in complete contact with the car body. That's, that's the only point on that. Okay, so our, our uh, cutout parts look pretty good. We're going to go ahead and glue in our corner piece, and, uh, and then the last step would be, that will be to glue them actually into the car itself. Okay, so we took our zap goo, we applied it to the side piece, a uh, bead around the edge, and then we just set it in place. And this is basically our light bucket. Alright, so we'll set this down, make sure the LEDs are kind of taped holding in the right position so they're pointing straight back. Do the same thing for the other one and then we're ready to put them in. Okay, here are our light buckets. They're drying. We'll give them, let them set up for probably at least a half an hour or so. Then we'll come back and install lights into the front light buckets and then we'll install the light buckets into the car itself. While our rear buckets were drying, I went ahead, cut out the front buckets as well as the body. 
so it's all ready to have the lights put into it. One item I wanted to note before we move on, uh, earlier I mentioned that if you if you painted your body a light body color and the light is bleeding through, you can get this tape from Home Depot, cut it to shape, and basically just put it in here, kind of like so, and that way any light that that's trying to get out will be blocked by that. It's really good at blocking the light. So essentially then we will go and go ahead and glue in our, our bucket on top of it, making sure that some of the, the zap goo gets in con contact with the body, the sticker, and the and the, our uh, light bucket. We don't really need this sticker on this car. The black paint is pretty dense and I already tested it. It didn't come through. So let's go ahead and start gluing in our light buckets. As we glue in the light buckets, what we want to do is we want to apply a bead of glue around the edge, right on the edge that's going to be in contact with the body. Okay, so now I've got a nice thick bead all the way around. Now when I set this down, I want to be careful. I don't want to get uh, the glue, if I can help it, onto the lens surface as much as I can. It looks like the way I have it here uh, should be okay. Nothing is going to touch. Okay, be super careful. I'm going to look at it from behind, make sure everything is aligned properly. Okay, it looks like it is. Now, gently going to hold this in place. Maybe put a little tape on it. Or, ah, just to kind of set it. Here are the bodies all complete. You can see the light canisters, the buckets that we made for this car, as well as the very curved shaped ones we made for this car. And you'll notice the blue tape that we put around here a couple places. We wanted a little bit more wire management control, so we put a little uh, tape on here to hold the wires in place and then we made bridges with the zap goo. Now that the zap goo is set up, we can peel the tape off and the zap goo will hold the wires in place. Okay, the bodies are all done. Let's take them out and see how they look in the dark.